Hi, good morning. Welcome again to DBS This Morning. My name is Maureen. Let's tap into the news desk to see what's happening before we get into our features. Good morning. Prime Minister Philip Pierre and Acting Police Chief Ronald Philip met with members of the Customs and Excise Department on Wednesday in a show of solidarity following the shooting of one of their colleagues on Tuesday afternoon. During his discussions with the customs officers and in a subsequent Facebook post, the Prime Minister condemned the shooting and called on the police to do all within their power to bring the perpetrator to justice. As a police department, I have pledged my support to the customs department. We are going to do all in our power, whether it's through training, whether it's through, whether it's through workshops, whether it's through um, joint operations. But I can tell you, we are, we are going to match this level of criminality with a response. I cannot speak to the operational details, but we are going to match this level of criminality and we are going to go on the offensive. We cannot make St. Lucia feel like there is any safe even for, for those criminals, those cowards. I call them cowards, you know, because that's what they do, drive by and, and then run away. But I'm telling you, we are going, as a police force, we are going to step up our game we, uh, again for the year. I, we have recovered more than 50 firearms, so the police officers are working. Unfortunately, we cannot be everywhere at any time, but I just want to rest assured, to, for you to be rest assured that we are doing all in our power to bring this situation under control. Prime Minister Pierre also denounced the glorification of crime and violence, including by public figures. He pledged to continue providing law enforcement with the resources to protect the country and also called on citizens to play their part in creating a safer, more harmonious society. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Philip Pierre has lambasted the opposition for what he says are clear attempts to politicize crime. Speaking in Parliament on Tuesday, he accused the United Workers' Party of engaging in a deliberate attempt to undermine the government by using members of the police force. Right now, I see police on social media saying the worst things about the government. Lying accusing policemen on social media policemen dancing at parties at political parties with uniform they have deliberately caused certain actions to be taken in the police force because they assumed and they presumed that these police officers did not support the United Workers Party and that's a fact. So when they talk and write on Facebook, these are facts, Mr. Speaker, facts. And Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you a little secret. Very soon, many more facts will be out. The Prime Minister also profited the opportunity to address criticisms of his handling of accusations of sexual impropriety by senior members of the RSLPF. He accused the opposition of being more interested in embarrassing the government than in justice for the alleged victims government is taking steps to bring relief to farmers hardest hit by tropical storm Brett. Agriculture Minister Alfred Prosper spoke to the media this week about some of the short-term measures being undertaken by his ministry to support the farmers. Well, it is somewhere any, um, around 25 million. That is what the report reveals. And that is based on a comprehensive you know, data collection that was done by the ministry. And it is somewhere around 25 million. And that includes, includes fisheries, bananas, planting, livestock, vegetables, and other and areas like infrastructure, like the greenhouses, etc. So it is quite a bit, and I'm hoping that you know our farmers will get what we call a little, some level of support. But I cannot see what it is, and I must remind you that it's a cabinet decision, it's not a Minister of Agriculture decision. The exact nature of the support will be announced in the coming weeks. Now, Castries North MP Stevenson King has challenged the St. Lucians to put your money where your mouth is by supporting government's proposed 2.5% health and security levy. He says while the government has made significant investments into crime fighting, the public has a critical role to play in the effort to reduce crime, especially violent crime. Failure to do so, he says, could have serious long-term economic implications for the country. What this government, Mr. Speaker, will ensure happens is that when we indicate that there is a 2.5% levy or tax security levy, that it will go towards improving the quality of security, the quality of policing in the country so that our people will feel safer. I believe, Mr. Speaker, the time has come where we should see on our streets patrols throughout the day and throughout the night. 
where people can feel comfortable at home, that in their community, that the police is going, coming around, that their beacons are flashing 24 hours a day. It is only when people feel safe in their society, Mr. Speaker, there will be greater economic activity. But while the government is asking citizens to contribute to funding their own security, King says that investment has to be reflected in the quality of security service delivered to the citizens. Those are your top stories. Thanks for watching. Good morning. Thank you very much, News Desk. We will be right back. First feature, we caught up with the program, the project um, put on by the SBDC is the Young Entrepreneurs in Action program and we caught up with the coordinator. So we are here with Nyla, we're down at the, the launch of the project, the business, the SBDC, the SBDC the yeah, yeah. that's the acronym, yeah, the <laughs> SBDC, yeah. In action, young yes. entrepreneurs in action. Um, you are the coordinator, yes. um, which means you had quite a task on your hands yes. leading up to where we actually here now, yes. seeing the pairing of students with with employees for the next six weeks. Yes. Tell me about this. Okay, so it is a job attachment program where basically the students, students who are mostly in the technical areas, for example, like IT. Um, clothing and textile, these areas in which they can work with the entrepreneurs, get a feel of what it is to work with a small business. We're focusing on that so students will know, okay, eventually if one day they want to open their own business that they had the experience, that they will do it later on in the future. Right. Run us through, um, it, is this a special funded project? Um, how is that something that's always been done? Um, okay. Um, it is a project that recently has started. This is the second year that we'll, we've been doing this project, funded by the Ministry of Commerce. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and the initial goal, right, because we start something. W w the burden of this, of starting something like that would have come from some sort of research that showed we needed this here. So, okay, well, this initiative, it was an initiative that I came up with. Um, I figure, well, let's do something different where we can have the small business, the students work with the small businesses, let them have that experience. So I'm the founder, basically the founder of the project. We will need something for the youth to look forward to. And we need something where, stu um, from my experience going to school back in the day, um, they used to focus a lot on um, courses that are more in the academic field. So I say, okay, let us look to see, let's encourage students to go into a more technical environment because times are changing, let's give them that experience to go into that area. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times now we see um, employees are looking for persons and the, one of the first top line you see experience. Yes. So how are they going to get the experience if they don't? If they don't have that experience. So it is good for them to start off at secondary schools because like, like um, as you know this project is from four, from fours and from fives. So at least the students going to start at that early age to get the experience. I had done experience when I was younger, so why not not have the students work with the entrepreneurs at a young age? Right. Was it difficult getting the entrepreneurs to come on board? It, um, I could say it is a bit half-half because um, entrepreneurs are very, very busy. So we have some, some persons that came on right away and then we had some person, maybe we had to give them a little, we had to coax them a bit to, to join. I heard you were quite efficient in that department. Yes, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. So what is, what is your hope coming out of this? I mean, this is your baby right here. Yes. So at the end of the six weeks, what, what will put that big, broad smile on your face? Well, I am hoping that all the students complete the program. Okay, I'm hoping nobody drops out from the program, number one. And number two, I just hope that the, ex the students later on, just that experience, it gives them some motivation for the future. 
right? So they will do, they know what they want. They give them the experience of what they're doing to, for them to go into that field. Right. Mm -hmm. Statistically, how many students were, were signed up under that program for this, for this um, era? Okay, 40 students were signed up for this program this year. And let me just mention that last year we had the same 40 students, okay? But last year, after the program, four students actually got employed with businesses. Okay, so you're hoping to get, get a bigger number coming out of this time? Yes, I'm hoping so. Well, you know what, this is a great, 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 great project and a wonderful initiative. Wonderful thought pattern and, and let's, let's hope that the future of this continues to remain climbing. Yes, yes, I'm hoping so. I'm wonderful. hoping Anything for great Anything you want to leave results. with John Public while we, we wrap up? Uh, I just want to um, make mention to let us always look forward to encouraging the youth, right? Because they remember they are the future generations of tomorrow. So let us look to encourage them, try our best as adults to let them move forward. Right? That's that's basically what I have to wonderful. say. Wonderful. Tudors again on a wonderful initiative. <laughs> thank wonderful. you. Thank you. lighten things up a bit in our second feature. DJs, we listen to their music, we dance to their music, we request the, the music when we find them in the clubs uh, and on the radio. But what really is a DJ? We caught up with Hyper D. We see them, we jump to their music, we make noise with them in all of the fests and the parties. But what is the life really like for a creative, a DJ, a musical director, which is what this gentleman here falls into. He has so much to fall under. He's not just a DJ, he's a, he's a musical director. He does, he's done so much more than just DJing. And I thought it was necessary because I've had the privilege of working alongside this gentleman right here. And I think it's very important for us to shed light on what it is and who they really are and what they really bring to this cultural space. I'm here with DJ Hyper D. Multi-talented. Shut up, what's going on? <laughs> oh, my Marine, you got me on a really tired, tired time. You can see the tired face. Um, I wanted to catch you at that moment. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 I wouldn't say it's bad because I am thankful for everything that's happening right now, but it is tough <laughs> right yeah, it now. It takes a lot out of you because out of you have to go to every fet and ensure that you bring that energy yes. because you are really and truly somebody that, you, your role at a fet is what? You see, you see, you see, you see. Basically, people will see how I put in believe, believe, like, okay, not DJ. Yeah, I've seen him before, but there's much more, like you mentioned earlier. There's much more to Hyper D. Yes. Um, when people hire Hyper D to a party or, or an event, let's say the national event, it's not just because I'm a DJ. Right. There's much more behind it, yes. um, from production yes. to to making sure that okay, you can't fault on anything. Everything has to be on cue, yes. on point. Everything has to happen as planned. Yes, yes. This is why you see hyper at certain events that you wouldn't see a normal DJ at or a regular DJ at. So it's not just about, okay, the talent is the discipline, is the way that you conduct business, the way that you conduct yourself, mm -hmm. and basically the hard work that you put in yes. to making things happen. Absolutely. The, the side that people don't see, yes. the preparation, yes. what happens behind the scenes, yes. that's why I'm probably one of the, the, the most requested, the most chosen ones to, to do events. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, because it is more than just, yeah, like you said, selecting of music. Yeah. You have to have a, a, a grounded insight as to what the do's and the don'ts are. A lot of people don't understand when you are, um, um, you, you, you are chosen or, or selected mm -hmm. to represent at certain national events, certain, certain events, it's more than just a selector, selection it's of music. DJ, so You've got to understand and know what 
is what's acceptable. A lot of DJs, for instance, do not have that basic knowledge that if you're going to be at a competition as a DJ, you can't play songs from people who are actually part of the competition. And a lot of people don't have this little basic basic information and, and, and insight. Um, not to mention, again, like mm -hmm. I said, I wanted to talk to you. A lot of the music that we are hearing, mm -hmm. you have contributed one way or the other. A lot of the um, voicing that we're hearing, a person's act being put on by the National Queens, by this, yep. you're yeah. actually some of the person, one of the person that um, actually work alongside with pr production of a lot of this stuff. Yes, uh, for instance, the National Queen Show, you heard um, the judges' bios, you heard the, uh, I would say, the costume introductions and stuff like that. All, that. all that was done beforehand. It wasn't something that was being done on the fly. So all this preparation, it was a lot of hard work. I could, I could, I could safely say that the Day of Queen Show, I left the studio at five to get to the venue at seven. So imagine being at work from 11, 12 in the afternoon to making sure that everything is on cue, make sure it sounds good. I could even remember that um, on the night of the event, the sound engineer came to me, asked me, who produced those stuff? I said, like, yeah, that's, that's my work. It's like, yo, first time he's actually hearing, like, okay, well, this sounds the proper way. How is it supposed to be done? So, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that happens mm -hmm. that I put down or that, that I do that people don't know. So, they'll see, they'll see I put them be like, oh, yeah, I put it, yeah, yeah. that DJ again. <laughs> you know? that, 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 that's a common, yeah. that's a common yeah. phrase, that DJ again. But there's a lot that happens behind the scene. Mm -hmm that people don't understand. Right. Now, let, let's, let's go there, because we, we see a lot of that in this industry. A lot of people thinking that like, you could give somebody a chance. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to give somebody a chance? If, it, if people disrespect our, 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 our industry in that way, you work, you gain the respect, you gain what you gain, and you get the recognition based on the work you put in and the quality of what you put out. You understand? And people tend to think that our job is, okay, let's give somebody a chance. What does that mean? You're not going to go and tell a lawyer, give the man by the market a chance to support you know to represent you in in the field of thing and i think we need to very really and truly shed light in that area as well so person's going to start taking our job a little bit more seriously it is not give somebody a chance because it's something everybody could do these are things that you need to study for there's constant preparation you've got to learn and understand music at an in-depth stage as well to know what is appropriate at the time in what you what you're operating in so it is not just pull a record and play music and people yes need to understand that as well which you have a very good command of yes. and I, I must say kudos to you for that because you have definitely invested in a craft in that light and you have a, a DJ that that understands that yes so I'm, I'm all for chances I'm, I mean I I myself I work with younger DJs that I try to mold and make them understand the business a different way chance I'm all for chances but there are certain times when it comes to events that everything has to be on point that you, you need a professional. Yes, you, you yeah. cannot falter. Everything has to be on cue. Everything has to go out the way that it's supposed to go. And that's the, like I said, that's the behind, behind the scenes. I'm going to give a, a, an, an example again. All right. I'm somebody I like to challenge myself. I don't like to be, do the normal. Marine, you know that. We work yes, together. Yes. I don't like to sound normal. I don't like to be normal. So, like, okay, last year. Um, I don't know if you were at Euphoria. You... you Euphoria is a show that it is a production. It's not just a show that you come to and people perform, artists perform. So I approached approach the producers of um, Euphoria and said to them, you know what? I don't want to be the, like a normal DJ in the show. I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I want to do something different and I want to take up a challenge. So they were like, okay, I put it. what do you have in mind? Gave the ideas. I said, okay, you know what? This year, I'm going to back up the, the artists, the local artists, the local actors in the show. But I don't want to do it in a normal way like, they just play on the playback. They come and sing on the playback. I said, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a band together. It's not really a band, but a partial band where there's a drummer, there's a, a, a keyboardist, and we're going to make it sound like a full band. Yeah. And that's exactly what, is, what happened. But you as a DJ. I was a DJ. You're doing your part. Yeah. And they're doing their yeah. part, and it came across so, like a, a, an actual band. Full band. Wow. Full band. And um, it happened in such a way that after it was done, the, the, the producers of, of Euphoria was like, Hyper, that's, what, that's your task. So this year again, as much as it was an, an experience for me, oh, it is work, because that's what I'm trying to finish off right now. Okay. You know, so look out for Euphoria, look at, you'll see a few changes, you'll hear certain things that you didn't hear before, yeah. or you may hear a song, but 
it may not sound the same way that you heard in the recording. There's going to be a little twist to it, a little turn, and that's where I, that's the genius behind iPody. That's the part that people don't really see. They'll be like, okay, that doesn't sound normal, you know. Mm -hmm. Sounding to me, sounding better. Right. But that's me. Right. That's exactly. that's 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 where that's where I come in. So, like I said, I'm all for chances. I'm all for for giving someone a chance. But there are certain times when it comes to being on point and having things different or 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 professional in a way. You have to wait for professional. You have to have that professional air. You must have that 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 vibe, that 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 difference. So that I would I wouldn't say difference, but I would say like like the the professionalism and 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 just the know how. Yes. Absolutely. Sometimes you're gonna take chances. Absolutely. Yes. I totally agree with you. Um, we gotta wrap up. Um, how can persons follow you? Of course, you're also a, a, a touring DJ. If persons would like to book you uh, and stuff like that, they, they, how can they get to do well, that? You can, you can you can hit me up on Instagram. Um, DJ Hypody. That's how it is. Pull one word DJ H Y P R D on on um, on Instagram or you can hit me up on Facebook. My, my name on Facebook is Orlando Philip. That's a government name, so yeah, you can find me there. <laughs> when they're writing the check. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, a, we just needed to share light on, 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 no. your, on, your, on your vibe, on your thing, because uh, trust me, I, I, you know already, you're hearing them, you know what's going on, but you, they also need to stop for a moment and understand that this is not just a, a pick up by the wayside thing. Yeah, You've actually not. invested in this craft and you do a lot more than yeah. just pick up music and play. Yes, I, um, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me this feature. Because sometimes people don't really understand. They just see you and be like, uh, another DJ that day. Yes, yes. <laughs> but they don't understand the hard work and, and the dedication that's behind it and the behind the scenes that happens. That when you see certain things happening, you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's just doing that. But no, there's much more behind it. Absolutely. But thank you for that opportunity. Wonderful. Yeah. Big, up, big up my DBS crew. <laughs> yeah, big up DBS. What's <laughs> the money show? Yeah, that's the money show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, thank you. DBS, yeah, big up DBS. Yeah, big up DBS. Yeah. so glad to see you again my name is Candy Nicholas and I'm an holistic health coach and today we're going to talk about energy especially in the context of iron deficiency anemia I know this is a season where it will be especially needed by many but who doesn't need tons of energy just to get through life's everyday task I know I definitely do now a lot of us and rightly so associate the lack of energy or fatigue of any degree with being anemic but did you know that there are several other symptoms which can signal the presence of this condition. These include shortness of breath, dizziness, chest or abdominal pains, headaches, cold or numb hands or feet, low body temperature, pale skin, irritability, black tarry or bloody stools, blood loss, weight loss, and rapid or irregular heartbeats. But what really is it? What, what is anemia? It's actually a condition in which a person's blood contains a lower than normal number of red blood cells, which are the cells responsible for cycling oxygen and carbon dioxide between the tissues of the body and the lungs. The symptoms of anemia can occur if the red blood cells present in the blood don't have enough hemoglobin, which is a protein that allows the cells to transport oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body, and that also gives blood its vibrant red color. Some factors which can contribute to the rise of anemia include blood loss, um, and that is the most common cause of anemia, which is why menstruating um, ladies have to be careful. Now, it also occurs if, if a person loses a signific significant amount of red blood cells through bleeding. Blood loss can be caused by, as I just mentioned, heavy menstrual periods. It can be caused by surgery, traumatic injury, cancer, and bleeding in the digestive or urinary tract. Another is a low red blood cell production. The body requires certain nutrients to produce them, including iron, folate, and vitamin B12. If a person doesn't get enough of these nutrients, insufficient numbers of new cells are produced and anemia can result. Chronic kidney disease, cancer, infections, radiation therapy, some medications, and even pregnancy can also suppress the normal activities of the bone marrow and decrease red blood cell production. So, what should we, we do, and I'm throwing myself in there too, if you've been diagnosed with anemia? 
So one of the things you can do that is easy because you're going to be cooking anyway is consider cooking in cast iron pots as the cooked food absorbs iron. For those of you who eat meat, increase your intake of red meat um, and make sure that it is as untainted as possible. So, um, you know, preferably local red meat from cows that have been um, pastured on, on grass and a diet that they're supposed to eat. Uh, chicken and fish, um, both also produce um, provide some iron so that is one of the ways that you can look if you are a meat eater i'm not against any diet but i'm for food quality so um just make sure you're eating good quality food of whatever kind um of whatever kind of diet you follow so vegetarian sauces include whole grains, dried beans, molasses. Remember the blackstrap molasses we used to be given as children? Continue with it. Dried apricots, prunes, and leafy vegetables such as kale, callaloo, and spinach. You should also eat more foods that enhance iron absorption because sometimes we eat things with lots of iron but it's not being absorbed into our bodies. So these include fruit and veggies that are high in vitamin C. Um, make sure you have access to a good quality um, real yogurt that actually contains live and active cultures and it contains lactic acid and that also promotes iron absorption. Fermented soy foods such as tofu or natto can also help absorption as well. Now, if you are anemic and you know for sure, tests don't guess, but if you're tired, it won't hurt to take steps towards, you know, managing your iron levels in your body. You want to avoid caffeinated beverages, um, eggs and milk bran, and these things actually interfere with iron absorption. Other helpful foods, um, I mentioned blackstrap molasses, but I want to put a spotlight on it again. And blackstrap molasses is um, the sweet leftovers of um, that are formed from the refined sugar making process and it is actually full of many important nutrients including iron manganese and it's chock full of other minerals these nutrients help restore the natural nutrient consumption in the body to help boost red blood supply chlorophyll is almost an exact match of red blood cells or hemoglobin in the human body with such a unique composition chlorophyll can serve as a substitute for red blood cells until the body is able to replenish the healthy red blood cell counts um, this is where leafy greens come in but you can also purchase chlorophyll in capsule or liquid form of course the real thing is best but if you're on a time budget or you're really busy the second best thing is chlorophyll drops or capsules beetroot may very well be one of the best natural remedies for anemia it cleanses the blood while supplying oxygen and increasing the blood count in the body and it makes an ideal treatment for the condition i regularly use it in my juicing recipes and the results the results can be felt almost immediately i just feel this jolt of energy some inherited blood disorders can destroy red blood cells at a faster rate than the body can replace them so you want to be mindful of that so if you suffer from or with sickle cell anemia and thalassemia um, which is a rare blood disorder involving less than normal amounts of oxygen carrying protein of course you need to be mindful of your red blood cell count we have an abundance of blood building foods available right here in the caribbean and in saint lucia so now that you're equipped with the knowledge let's go out make a spinach soup make a callaloo soup juice some beets roast them just get it in Another thing that I've learned over the years that should be seriously considered is parasitic infestation or as we say colloquially worms. Sometimes these monsters inside us actually leach off our nutrient supply including our iron stores and we can't consume iron fast enough to keep up with how they're using it up. So that is something to consider if you've been anemic for a while and you've tried everything and nothing seems to be working. You may have some freeloaders in your body that are using up your iron stores for their own survival and not leaving any behind for you to use for yours. So these are all things to consider. There are a lot more, but we have to stop here today. This has been the Wellness. I'm Candy Nicholas. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye.
I hope you enjoyed our offerings for today. Enjoy what's left of the day and join us again tomorrow. We'll be right back here.